Welcome to 3 Minutes of History. I'm your future history teacher, Chris Oxenford, and let's get started. March 28th, 1862. Gloriata Pass, New Mexico. Two armies clash in a battle that will decide the fate of the New Mexico Territory and quite possibly the outcome of the Civil War. Almost as soon as the Civil War had begun, the Confederacy had turned its eyes toward California, Colorado, Utah, and New Mexico. Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederacy, hoped that by launching a campaign into the New Mexico Territory, what is today Arizona and New Mexico, the Confederacy could capture the gold fields of the West, secure valuable war supplies, and seize ports on the Pacific coast. To lead the New Mexico campaign, Jefferson Davis commissioned General Henry Hopkins Sibley to raise three regiments in Texas in the summer of 1861. Sibley was an experienced Army veteran. He was born in 1816 in Louisiana and attended West Point. While serving in the Army, he invented the Sibley tent and the Sibley tent stove to heat it. By 1861, Sibley was serving in New Mexico. He resigned his commission on May 13th, the same day he reached the rank of major. Having lived in New Mexico, Sibley was familiar with the area and believed that there was support for Confederate cause in the territory. During the summer of 1861, Sibley raised about 2,500 troops for the campaign in New Mexico, and that winter he concentrated them at Fort Bliss near El Paso, Texas. In January 1862, Sibley, together with the newly designated Army of New Mexico, set out to capture Fort Craig, 100 miles to the north, and secure much-needed supplies for the campaign ahead. Union forces in New Mexico were commanded by General Edward R. S. Canby. Like Sibley, Canby was a career officer who had served in the antebellum Indian Wars. In fact, he had been Sibley's commanding officer during his service in New Mexico, and there were unconfirmed rumors that the two men were, in fact, brothers-in-law. In terms of personality, Sibley and Canby could not have been more different. Sibley was aggressive, but prone to drunkenness, where Canby was cautious and methodical. On February 16th, Sibley's army reached Fort Craig and realized that it was too heavily defended for his small army to take it. Determined to try and maneuver Canby out of the fort, Sibley crossed the Rio Grande River and tried to cut Canby off from his supply base at Santa Fe. The two armies would clash on February 21st at Valverde. Sibley was drunk during the battle and allowed his subordinate, Thomas Green, to lead the fight. The Confederates managed to win the battle, but Canby was able to fall back to Fort Craig, denying Sibley much-needed supplies. Instead of retreating to Texas, the Confederate Army pressed further north, and on March 2nd they captured Albuquerque, but found that Union supplies there had been destroyed. Sibley sent his forces on toward Santa Fe, but remained at Albuquerque himself, leaving command of the army to another subordinate, William Scurry. Scurry's men captured Santa Fe and learned that a Union army was moving through the mountains. On May 26, Scurry dispatched a small force to try and stop this advancing Union force, which was led by Major John Shivington. Shivington and his Colorado volunteers drove the Texans back from their defensive position. Over the next two days, the Union and Confederate armies were heavily reinforced. On the morning of March 28th, both Scurry and the commander of the Union Army, John Slow, decided to advance through Glorietta Pass. At about 11 a.m., the two armies, 1,100 Confederates and 900 Union soldiers, collided. Throughout the afternoon, there was intense fighting between the two forces. but the Union troops were slowly driven back and were forced to abandon several defensive positions. However, while Scurry was driving back this Union force, some 400 men managed to reach a position called Johnson's Ranch, behind the advancing Confederates. Scurry had left his supply wagons at Johnson's Ranch, which was discovered by these advancing Union soldiers. The soldiers destroyed Scurry's wagons, killed his horses and mules, and burned any supplies they could get their hands on. When Scurry learned of this development, he was forced to request a flag of truce from John Slow. March 29, 1861, was spent burying the dead, and then the Confederates retreated, first to Santa Fe 
and then all the way back to Texas. By July 1862, there was not a single Confederate soldier anywhere in New Mexico. Sibley would continue to command the Arizona Brigade in the Trans-Mississippi Theater, but badly blundered during two battles and was accused of drunkenness and cowardice in 1863. After the Civil War, he was recruited into the Egyptian Army for three years, between 1870 and 1873, but was again relieved because of illness and his alcoholism. He would eventually settle in Fredericksburg, Virginia, where he would die in poverty in 1886. This has been Three Minutes of History. I'm Chris Oxenford. Thank you for joining me.